Hello everybody. I've just been asked a while ago, um, you've been showing us how to make a double weld packet. Uh, do you think there's a chance you could show us how to make a packet with different sizes of welds? Well, there are so many different ways of doing that and um, how to really start and finish them off. That's why, first of all, I've chosen a total different way how to do this particular packet that you see here. I do it by, first of all, creating or sewing a window in here. And all I have to do then is take my welds, put them underneath and stitch once around at my pocket material and it's practically finished. I've chosen this um, in different materials. First of all because I like to show you how nice it is if you look for any kind of bits and bats that you got left over instead of making a coat or a jacket with all the same material. Just put some color into your life. Put some color into your jackets. And then you will find how easy and how nice that is. Just to make this packet is really not difficult. I will show you while we're going on and, and while I continue making videos for YouTube. I will show you more in different ways as well because usually you do weld packets by stitching the actual weld on, not by making a window. But this one is even for starters. Quite a nice idea to try it. To try making this packet and you will see. You can manage, believe me. Alright, i show you how. If you have not done any pockets yet at all, I suggest just take a piece of leftover material and try it on that first. Otherwise, decide where exactly you would like to have your pocket. Mark it on the right side first in which position. Transfer it over to the left. And then, if you want to do it exactly as I'm doing it here, put a big square onto the position where your weld packet's supposed to get. So mine is 15 centimeters long and 3 centimeters uh, wide, the first one that we're putting in right now. Uh, of course, this is all up to you. You can make it much longer, you can make it shorter, you can make it wider. All up to you, but that is exactly then how you would draw your right angle to start this packet. And what you need, you need a facing, and I suggest um, this facing gets already an interfacing on, ironed on, and it's got to be all the way around at least approximately two centimeters wider. It can be wider than that if you want, but not much uh, shorter. Like I said, if you got a three by 15, make the facing you have at least two centimeters wider. Then you need your little welts. Also them, if you like to play around first, by and if you haven't made this decision where exactly you would like to place them and how sideways you want to go, make them big enough. You can always cut it down afterwards um, when you are uh, got the welts stitched in already. So again, measure this for your welts, double it and add the seams onto it that you need. So I got three here, that would make six plus two centimeters a seam on, on each side one centimeters. So I would have to have at least eight centimeter widths for this particular welt. Approximately the same for the other color. As I'm saying, I want to make it in two different colors. And also the sides, they should be standing over approximately two centimeters. One is always a bit short, especially if you want to make them sideways. Now on that color one, as it's a jersey, I also put an interfacing on, on the white piece I didn't. So I'm starting by putting this approximately underneath in the middle. I'm checking that I got approximately everywhere around the same amount of my facing standing over my drawing as you can see this here. And now all we do is stitch 
all the way once around. And of course, you got the proper sides facing each other when you put this on. It doesn't matter if you start on this side, on the right side of my drawing, as you can see. And in the moment you notice that maybe your material is um, pushing forward, the top one, then take your template, as you've been seeing in lots of my videos, work with templates, and your material will be as flat as if you only have one piece lying there. That's always the very best. Now I'm coming around again, and of course in the corners, always leave the needle stuck in the material. And now I'm not doing any backwards stitching. I just stitch over my first stitches again. It's always much better than if you do backwards and forward stitching all over the place. Now you can see I've chosen a red thread on the bottom, only for you to be able to see this much, much better. And it's not exactly in the middle of my um, uh, facing piece, you can see that, but that doesn't matter. So you can mark yourself approximately in the middle, a line down for the cutting, and then from your last stitches, you do a little triangle that you mark there. If it's not so exactly in the middle, the triangle like that, that doesn't matter. But approximately it should be in the middle. And you don't need to mark it, but I'm marking this so you really see how I'm cutting this in. All right. So here's my trick with the scissors. I just wipe. I'm on my hands once, but don't close them while you're doing this. But you will find your scissors immediately um, cutting better. Try it on your scissors. Try first the cutting and then once do it over on your hand like that or pull them through the hairs without closing the scissors. All right, start anywhere in the middle. And now don't do it like that. Nope, do it like that. You cut with the front, not with the inside back of the scissors, because that's too dangerous. Immediately, you could just slip over the top there. That's why I'm not doing this. I do it like that. I put it in position, and with one little cut, that's done. That's how you should always do it. And if you have scissors that don't do this, then go to a proper store, take a piece of material with you, and buy a proper pair where you can do this like that. That's perfect then. All right, now all I'm gonna do is I could go directly to the ironing board, but that makes it more difficult on the ironing. But I stitch just once against this facing piece. That means my facing piece is lying towards my cut and I'm practically stitching on the seam that is in the middle there now because I created the seam by cutting in the middle through. So if you take this now and turn it over to the left side and go to your ironing board, it's already done, practically done. It lies so nicely and flat on those two sides already. You can see that there. You can do it on the sides if you wish. I usually don't do this, but I just show you anyway how to do it. Again, I'm just stitching on that facing piece that's hanging over onto the little seam that is inside there now. And you can see the difference. That one lies as if I maybe had the iron on already. And this one, I got a ribble out. And there are certain materials sometimes, they ribble very badly. So now I go to my ironing and I come back to you. Here we go. I'm back from my ironing and you can see I got a lovely, straight, beautiful window square here. Of course, you don't need to do it square like that. As an example, you would say that's a bit boring. So you can do it exactly the same way by maybe adding some uh, sideways um, sewing there and the pocket will be like that then. This is all up to you. It does not have to be square like that, but the work itself is exactly the same when you do it just a little bit different for yourself then. So first of all, I decide I want to stitch the edge of this to, uh, together to give it a different look as well. And on this material, I do not, I didn't put any interfacing on uh, in the back. 
And I think, mm, okay, I add another seam. Now I'm making two seams there with the contrast stitching, which give it a different look, which I like to show you. That's all you can do. You could also fill this whole piece in with many stitches like that. Okay, here we got two stitches. Now I can decide, do I want the red one up, which would uh, go together with this color from my uh, color one there, or I choose the blue color to the top, which is to go with the jeans material then. But that's all up to you. So I'm just going to put these two pieces together with a couple of stitches just to hold them in position so they're flat. You could also overlap them a little bit. They do not have to go edge on edge together as I did it here. They could overlap. And now you just slide it underneath and decide how you would like to stitch them under there. You could make it totally straight as you see it here now. Then it would look like two even welds. But I told you I like to show you how simple it is by just turning this material now a little bit over. I'm checking underneath that I got enough material everywhere. And I'm just pulling it over to a different position. That's all I'm doing. And this pocket gets a total different look, especially when you work with different colors. It really is a showy pocket then. And still it can be used anyway. So I'm checking again. Do I have enough material in every position underneath? And now you should put some pins in if it's a long, big pocket because you don't want it to move anywhere. Or you can just start stitching as well. It's up to you, depending on how good you are and how good your machine is. This is always also a matter of a machine. If I have a very cheap machine, which is not good in transporting, um, as you know, the, the tools for working with are also very, very important. So I just start on one of the short sides. It doesn't matter where you start on going around on this particular pocket. On other ones, it sometimes makes a difference where to start. But I'm starting on the short sides without uh, going back and forth because again, rather I go over my first stitches when I get around. And as well here, I leave the needle inside the material. I check again to make sure my pocket in, is in the right angle as I wished it wanted to be. Unless you would have made it sideways, then you got to check that your angle is correct that you wanted to create there. Again, I go here, needle inside, and now I just go a couple of stitches over the first ones the way I started early on. And see, when you look at some uh, finished um, coats that you buy, look at the pockets. Then you can see where they usually, where they start in the corner, they got their back and forth stitching. When they come around on the top, they do the next ones. And it just doesn't look nice. And if you just go over your own stitches over again, you hardly don't see it at all. Now, of course, this needs to be a cut straight, so you got to a one and a half centimeter seam for adding your uh, lining pocket or pocket lining onto. But otherwise, practically, this pocket is finished. And you could, like I said, turn it and twist it until you say, this is exactly how I want this pocket to be in the position. All right, so we can practically continue with the next one. All right, so here is the second little pocket. Again, you draw, or you've drawn it in the beginning, before, your three centimeters for the uh, width you would like to have it, or the height. And in this case, I've chosen to do this pocket 10 centimeters long. I need an interfacing for it which I already uh, put some uh, stiffener I ironed on, some other interfacing, so I get a little bit of a, a good grip for this pocket, which has to go on the right side, right on right together, exactly underneath, and I will go once around it. As well, 
you need for this pocket the a little welt, which has got to be um, at least um, in this particular case, if we do it the same as this pocket, it should be at least 7 centimeters wide, so you can really decide even a bit later on how you like to do it. I made mine even wider because when I cut it I wasn't quite sure how wide I want to make it, but this doesn't matter, you can always cut it smaller later on. And it should be at least 2 centimeters longer on each side. And the same for this white one. Unfortunately, I only had a tiny little left material from this one, so that's on that side a little bit smaller, but I know it's big enough for my hole that I have here. So, as I mentioned before, I'm putting this exactly underneath, or as well as much in position that it's covering um, both sides that I see and on the length as well that I got ma enough material all the way around underneath. And now I just stitch all the way around it. By the way, if you think this is too boring to have a square pocket, you can also draw it slightly sideways this way, the same on this side, or you can make them both smaller towards this end or the other way. It doesn't matter. It's exactly the same way how you will make this pocket. Um, so draw it any kind of design uh, you like. And now we're stitching once all the way around this line. And it doesn't matter if I start there or if I start here. So I just start here for a change. I go along this side exactly into my drawing corner there. Leave the needle stuck in the bottom in and go along there again. If you have the feeling your material is pushing and doesn't want to lie flat like this, then take my trick that I keep telling you about. Put a template underneath and go along and you will see nothing will push. Everything will be in exact position as you would like to have it. My last side here, I go straight down that line that I drew, and here I do not go back and forth with the machine, I just let the machine run over a couple of stitches over my first seam that I have there already. I chosen extra this red um, thread for the bottom so you can really see it very well. As on every pocket, no matter how you're making it, you have to cut this open in the middle now, which is usually the worst for somebody who hasn't done so many pockets because you think, oh, I'm going to cut my material, I'm going to make a mistake now. No, you won't. Mark yourself, if you wish, a line down the, approximately down the middle. And then draw a dry angle from your last stitch there. And the dry angle, it all depends on um, how wide your part is here but it should be big enough that you can easily fold it back. And do the same on this side. Do a nice drawing from this corner towards the middle line that you marked already and the same here. So now you got to take your scissors. If you think they're not cutting so well, you can do this trick by pulling them once over your slightly fetid fingers because the body always puts crease, luckily, on our skin again, otherwise we would be dried out very badly. And then start wherever you want to. Doesn't matter where you start. Make sure you're not cutting anything else you might have underneath. Cut approximately down the middle and stop there. Now go bit by bit if you want to or put your scissors exactly into that corner and do one click. But don't do what I sometimes see in YouTube or from other people. They got scissors, they don't cut so well on the front, so they think they got to do this. You know how easy your scissors can slip and suddenly you didn't cut to there, you cut all the way to there. And if it's a coat already that you want to do, well, you got it messed, messed up then. So always for pockets, always do it like that. In one cut, not with the inside of the scissors, but really with the end there, with the front. So here the same. I'm holding it in position and one snap down. Same here. Oops. 
and that's the most done already. Now I have to go to the iron in a moment but to make it easier for me on the ironing board I will just stitch along this seam here by folding this over, my facing over and I'm stitching on this seam part, on the facing without going back and forth with my machine I only hold this down because it's going to make my ironing so much easier. Same on the other side. And I don't do any back and forward stitching. I just leave it like that. Now, if it's a very long piece here, I can do the same there if I want to. So I just show you again how that will look like. Because now, when I pull these parts to the left side, where they got to go now before I go on the ironing board, you can see that this is practically lying in position already. While well, this one, I have to ribble out to get it exactly in that position. And with some materials, it's more difficult than with this uh, very loose jeans material that I got here. All right, I just go to my ironing board and then we continue. All right, as you can see, I've been to the ironing board and I ironed it nice and flat. So all I have to do now is put my little welts underneath. I got this one cut the same as on the bottom. And this one I haven't ironed over yet, so I do exactly the same as there. As I like this with these two little stitches, I'm going to do this contrast stitching once about a millimeter along the edge. And then I go once. Nah, come on. Doesn't want to come out. <laughs> I stitched it on. That can happen as well. And then I just go along about three millimeters next to that stitch that I've done here already. Just for show, for no other reason. Or shall we put another one on? Come on, we put another one on. Why not? Just so you see what all you can do. You can make every pocket or any pocket look different than the one you've done before. By just adding another line there. Alright, now again, as on the first pocket, in case if you watched it all the way, I will just put a little seam here to put them together. It, it's not necessary, it would also lie down without that, but of course it makes the job much, much easier to continue on with. All right, and now you got the choice. You could, you can put it exactly the same way under as you've done with the first pocket. Whoops, the other way around. How do I have that here? <laughs> I gotta think. Yeah. That would be exactly the same, but again you could say, God, that's boring to put it the same way. Well then why don't you turn this around and do it the opposite, either that way, then it would be a continuation of the two white lines going up like that. Or we have a look and put it once the other, although this looks quite good, I must admit. Hmm? Shall we do that? Or no, I think, I'm, I think we're going to do it that way. I like that. I really like that. But first of all, I have to look underneath to make sure, as I said, I cut them way, too, way bigger and much bigger anyway, and that's okay. But that I really like. So, you can either put some pins in, which I suggest you do, or you just pull it under your sewing machine and again, you start on one side wherever you wish, but I suggest always to start on a short side because then you can also slightly pull it again in position or, or change a needle if you got a needle in. Or now you take your a template, let's just add a tiny little stitch more, I'm not quite around the corner there. And now I don't need to put no pin in if I work with my template here. So I go all the way to the end. Again here, 
I check again, I can pull it in position wherever I want it, where I need it. And I go up there. And again here. Take your template. Look how easy it is then. And you get a totally straight line. And somebody's going to say, where did you learn how to sew so straight? I can't do that. And then I just go a couple of stitches over that. Because when you look at some um, clothes that you're buying, and you look at pockets, you often find these stitchings that they went back and forth there, then they go around, and they go back and forth there again. And sometimes they do like a centimeter all the way back and all the way down here. And it looks so thick and so ugly. But if you just go over the same line again for three, four stitches, that's all it does, uh, takes and needs. So, here we go. That's your finished pocket. Besides that you have to put your lining, or your pocket lining on there now and on there. And of course you cut it straight first because as we didn't cut this, um, these little welds, I cut them straight and not sideways. That's why there's something sticking over now. So you cut them straight for yourself first and then you can easily add your lining material and close the pocket and you got two lovely pockets made finished right there. Now, was that so difficult? No. And I know you can do it as well, believe me. Try it. So once again I show you the uh, finished pockets. Besides that I have not added the uh, um, lining material, other the pocket lining material, because um, this is only to show you how to actually make them. And I like to show you this idea. Um, maybe you don't want a real pocket. Maybe you only want it for show. Then you could do exactly the same and say you have another different color for underneath. Then just cut one big enough to go underneath and then go all the way inside here along the pocket inside and then you have a a plined pocket, but that's very, very showy and very nice. Well, I hope I gave you some ideas for these nice pockets. And I would really like it if you give me a little comment to say if it worked, if you managed to do it, and I'm sure you can. Please try it. You will enjoy it. I wish you so much success, and I'm saying bye for right now. See you again.